The Brenton Road property in Grand Rapids, this is just a challenge we're dealing with because um, we had Metro Health in there for five and a half years. We cash flowed this building like mad. We made a ton of money off of it. It was great. They left. We thought, no brainer. We bought it so cheap we could sell it or lease it to somebody else. Well, there just doesn't seem to be any market. The area around this building has been going gangbusters. There's all kinds of new development. There's all kinds of growth. The problem is, is that there's no need for a single user 44,000 square foot building. So what we've done is we've hired an architect. We have really pretty renderings. We've got some plans in place. We've got some estimates for some construction costs. We've demoed the interior of this building and we're going to go back and put in the corridors and the restrooms and we feel very confident that we will lease this building out um, on a sublease basis. Another challenge that we're dealing with right now, property taxes. I don't know if any of you get reassessed on your homes anytime, but uh, it happens on commercial real estate all the time. We appeal our property taxes every year, but the tax battle is ongoing and inevitable and not all of our tax increases can be passed through to our tenants. In our, in our buildings that are purely triple net leases where the tenant's responsible for the taxes, those get passed through. But in some of our buildings, we have what are called gross leases. So the people pay us one monthly check and we have to pay the taxes out of that money. We've budgeted for this, and it's, but it's going to erode our cash flow over time. The good news is we also have increases in our leases over time, which should more than offset this. The thing I don't like about it is the incre it, it eats into what, I've, what I projected in my own head. It's not going to hurt what you guys have seen on paper, but we were hoping for uh, under promise and over deliver. And in what it's going to do to a number of our assets is just put them on track with what we projected. And we really want to try and exceed those projections whenever possible. Exceeding expectations. Farmcraft LLC holds the building that Quality Metalcraft is in. It was originally 185,000 square feet. And if you remember, they needed additional space not that long after we bought it. We've completed a 25,000 square foot expansion. We used some money from our reserves. We used some additional debt from the Bank of Ann Arbor. And because of the leverage on the debt, it allowed us to reinvest around $500,000 of our reserves at a very, very high cash flow rate, high cash on cash return. And we extended the lease out to 12 years. And this thing is just a dead home run. Our Livonia real estate portfolio, we've had a net gain in our bottom line on this. We purchased it very recently. Um, we've already had net lease up that has grown the bottom line on this building by $60,000, $70,000. We have Laurel Park, which we just bought in December at the end of the year. We have uh, uh, 4,000 or so square feet on the first floor and we have proposals on that space, which would make this building 100% full. And between these two alone, we're talking about $250,000 in additional free cash flow that pretty much, uh, I'd say around 200,000 of that drops straight to the bottom line and will increase that net operating income and will flow through to positive cash flow and allow us to raise that share price and distribute more money. The winners, 75 stable and doing what they're supposed to, 4.4% losers, 21% exceeding expectations. So going through the 2015 results, and this is where we get to share some nice things, I think, and maybe a little surprise that we presented. We had net operating income of $12 million. We had operating expenses of $3 million, giving us net operating income of about $9 million. Now remember, on the run rate sheet, it's showing over $12 million, but that's because we didn't own a lot of buildings last year that we own now, and we'll get a full year of owning them. So we'll hit 12 million. It'll actually probably be more than that this year um, because we'll add buildings throughout the year. We were able to take depreciation and amortization. Um, we had an interest expense of 2.5 million roughly. We did sell a property or two and we had some gains on the sale. So we had an additional 920,000 of cash. So we have taxable income of five and a half million dollars. Now here's the problem. We didn't distribute five and a half million dollars, but the K-1s are gonna report five and a half million dollars of income out to the members. With your K-1s this year, you're gonna notice that your monthly distribution check for February paid in March, and don't leave here without one because I believe we have checks here, right? We have checks here, Rachel has them. 
Um, if you're waiting on a K-1 from 2015, make sure you pick up a check. And I think you'll find that the amount of distribution is substantially more than your normal monthly distribution. It will vary because it's allocated based on what taxable income is distributed to you and how much of the capital gain hit you took on your shares. But it will be anywhere from, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a decent sized number. I believe the distribution totals 1.6 million for the month of March. Um, and I think we normally send out about $300,000. With 2015 in the books, what's the future of PF3 look like? Where do we go from here? Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, our philosophy, do the work once, get paid forever. The idea is to keep this thing rolling, keep doing what we're doing now, and think about saving to an income level as opposed to saving to a number. I talked about this with some of you probably. I think I've maybe done a video on it, but if you haven't seen it, what I mean by this is instead of thinking about having $3 million is enough to retire on or $5 million is enough to retire on, think about how much income you need to pay your expenses so that you don't have to work anymore and you can be comfortable in retirement and not worry about the loss of income. And this philosophy really came to me by watching my dad approach his retirement years and seeing that it didn't really matter what the number was in the bank. It didn't matter because it was the fear of the loss of income that was driving him to stay there. You want to save to an income that's predictable, that's stable, that you're comfortable with, that you're familiar with and you've been in for a while. And that's the vehicle that we're trying to create. And we're not going to change it. That's my life's mission, to tell you the truth. We're gonna create some additional opportunities. Um, we recently created this opportunity, the Elliott Hill LLC. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may have not. This is an 18 unit townhome development in Denver, Colorado. As you can see, an 18 month projected time frame and approximately 25% return in that time frame. We intended to actually make this investment from PF3 with the reserves from PF3, but we wanted to also allow people to invest in it individually. And we think that's a really good avenue. I think that's a really good avenue where we say, hey, if you want some diversification and you want uh, a shorter time frame on a return for your investment, here's an opportunity. And whatever the individual PF3 members don't take, the PF3 reserve will step in and, and take some shares. Now I believe about 1.9 million of the 2 million is gonna be taken by, or has been taken by individuals. And so PF3 is only gonna have maybe 100 grand in it, but that's fine. We have to pay attention to it and run it anyway and deal with it, but it's right by Mile High Stadium. It's not even called Mile High Stadium anymore, is it? Yeah, wherever the Broncos Wherever the Broncos play. I mean, it's literally uh, three blocks from the parking lot and it's an area that's being completely torn down, renovated, and rebuilt. And uh, every single project's been sold out before they've been able to complete it. So we've done the demo, the buildings have come down. Um, I believe site work commences next week. And I think by August, we'll have our first pre-sales in the books. And I think it'll close out right on, right on schedule. The price per foot that we projected on the sales, we thought was maybe aggressive but it's coming in at that or higher than that based on what's going on around it. So we think we'll come out very well. The Alati Hotel. This is another deal in Denver that we went and looked at. We're in a due diligence process on this. It's an Element Hotel, which is a Westin concept and a Starwood brand. Starwood's merging with Marriott, which is very exciting because Marriott's the best booking system in the world and gets the most hits out of anyone. This is an extended stay concept. There's all kinds of stuff happening in Denver. And the fact is there aren't enough cranes in the sky. When we drove around and toured Denver, there's not enough development going on. We were just heard today that right behind this uh, parcel of land that we've secured, there's a 500 unit condo, is a condo apartment. It's a high end class A apartment building going in. Um, right, uh, right kick down the street or whatever. Oh. Um, what's the other one? There's this is in an area called the Golden Triangle, and it's called a development by right. I think they call it development by right. There's no approval process. So if you own the land, if you have the land, you can build what you want to build. You have to get, you know, uh, building permits submitted, and you can't just build like, you know, something ridiculous. But there's no public voting like in Ann Arbor. Development can be exceedingly difficult because you have to go through this political process 
But this we anticipate having to pack it out within the next three weeks. And this will be an opportunity to invest in a five to seven year time frame deal. I think we've got six to eight up here. I'm thinking it'll probably be five to seven. And the projected total return of 16% annually is very safe based on the numbers we've seen. We do have a bunch of due diligence to get through. We have an HVS study coming. They're the uh, authority in, in appraising and, and telling you the truth about what's gonna happen with your hotel. Um, I got their information from Mike Martin. They just built the Marriott in downtown Ann Arbor. And basically he said, whatever they say will happen. It's exactly what will happen. He said, you might not like what they have to say, but don't ignore what they have to say. So until we get that HVS study back and the appraisal of what we think this thing will do, um, we're not gonna send it out. But it looks very, very good. And we think this will be a really neat opportunity for people, uh, either individually. I don't know that we'd try and turn this into a PF3 deal. It's not structured correctly. Um, we're limited on some of these additional opportunities in terms of what we can do because we didn't find them. So what's happening out there in the world is very good, very smart people are finding deals and finding opportunities, but they don't have the track record, they don't have the investor database to get them funded. So they have a viable deal, they've done the due diligence, it looks good, this was the case with the uh, Elliott Hill condos. We go out, we review all their due diligence information, we look at everything, and we propose a structure to them which says, we're always negotiating on behalf of you, on behalf of the investors, on behalf of the money. We're saying the money has to get paid first. The money has to come out first. Some of them don't like that and they go do something else. Some of them agree with our proposal and structure and there's some back and forth. But we, you know, if we try and take too much of the deal, then they won't go with us. But they don't have a lot of options. Just like we, when we were buying properties five years ago, seven years ago, sellers had no other option and we could sit there and say, this is what it's worth to us, this is what we would pay, and with no fear of losing out, it's the same situation that exists now because the guys that know how to do this and did this their whole lives are gone. They are out of the business. They are retired, they took their money, they ran, or they went bankrupt and they gave up and they're gone. So the younger people coming in trying to syndicate or sponsor deals, they don't have the access to equity. And that's where we're trying to position ourselves to say, we want to be the people that can spec a deal, know it's going to work, and put it out to our investors. And by know it's going to work, I mean have a really, really good feeling that it's going to work and, and do all the due diligence. You can't be 100% sure of anything. This opportunity we are trying to structure as a potential PF3 opportunity. This is called Park Place 5, 66,000 square foot multi-tenant office building that will go up right next to the public library on Oak Valley Drive between our office, if you've ever been to our office, and Oak Valley Drive. And the issue here is the, the uh, office market in Ann Arbor is full. There is no place to go if you want good office space. And the pricing is so high to get into that office space that we can actually build a new building and end up with a phenomenal deal and we don't feel like we're gonna get into a market that's ever gonna be overbuilt because again, the approval process is such a mess. And this is nice because it's in the township. It's already zoned correctly. We know it. And we already have a 11,000 square foot user um, signed up to be in it. And we have potentially ourselves moving our offices in there and signing a lease on this building as well. I'd like to own a small percentage of it. So I'd like to have it in PF3 or if we send it out to PF3 and people say, well, I, I, I'd rather you do that outside of PF3, no problem, we can do that too. It can be structured any which way. It's just, if possible, I'd like to get it into PF3 because it's an A asset and I believe we'll have at least 70, 80% before it's even completed. And I don't think uh, the, the remaining 10, 20% will be hard to lease at all once it's up. It's a beautiful building, that's not actually a very good rendering of it. We've changed it around a lot since then.